Ignition coil in the bin. TFI module in the bin. Distributor in the bin. Welcome back. I'm finally getting to a project that I have teased as far back as 2021. That is distributorless ignition. Last off season, I actually started working on it. I filmed some videos, but I never actually released any of the videos because I never actually finished the project. I ran out of time, ran out of parts, and I just tabled it to do later. Well, now is later. I have the parts. I still don't have very much time, but I think I can get it done. A lot of you may be asking why. Why not? It is time that we bring the small buck Ford into the 21st century. Ford stopped putting the distributor in the Mustang all the way back in 1995. That is 28 years ago. And other manufacturers have also phased out the distributor. The distributor is old technology that for some reason us as car guys put up with. Well, no more. And I'm planning to do this with as much Ford OEM parts as I can. That means no aftermarket ECU, no aftermarket harness or components, brackets, things like that. Yes, there will be a lot of custom work. I do have to make a custom harness, some custom brackets, uh, but other parts straight from Ford will bolt right onto this engine and make it a distributorless ignition. And yes, there are aftermarket kits out there from Holig and Megasquirt, Haltech, but those kits are expensive. And as far as I know, they are not a complete bolt on for the small block Ford. There will still be some custom work that would have to be done. I'll try to give as much detail as I can, but this is not going to be a step-by-step how-to. I do have a form thread going on EFI dyno tuning that I will link below that I'm trying to give a little bit more details in that form thread than I can really in the video, but this will be a good way to actually see what I'm doing, seeing the components. Now, if you're not familiar with the uh, distributor ignition, some of the benefits are better control of sparks since you have a coil at each cylinder, less moving parts, and just a cleaner look overall, in my opinion. So in order to get rid of this one component, we actually need to put a couple components onto the engine. First, we need to know the position of the crank. So we'll have a crank position sensor down here. This is actually one straight off of a Ford Explorer. So the Ford Explorers, uh, late 90s, early 2000s, had a small block Ford in it that was distributed as ignition. So a lot of those components you can take from that engine and put straight into uh, the Mustang. So I have the timing cover from the Explorer that then has the bolt pattern to put on the, the crank position sensor out there, but you can't use the dampener with the trigger wheel from the Explorer. It is a little bit different from the Mustang. So I will go over that in a little bit later, but yeah, just the spacing of the, the pulleys are different between the Explorer and the Mustang. So if you put this guy on, it is too far in for your alternator, power steering, water pump, and all that stuff. If you went to a full Explorer uh, setup, that could work, but that's just more components that you would have to buy. It makes it just a little bit more pricey, potentially. And then we have this hole where the distributor was. So we need to put something in that. So we have the, the cam sink from also the Ford Explorer. So that will go in there, that will plug the hole. It will keep the oil pump running. So that's one of the big things is the oil pump is ran off of, kind of off the cam gear. So as the cam hits this, the oil pump shaft goes into this and that's what turns the oil pump. This also will give us the, the cam sink. So we'll know where the, each of the lobes on the cam or which cylinder is firing. We will know that from this sensor and then we'll be able to do a sequential ignition. If we did not have this and just had the, the crank one at the bottom, we would be doing like Oasis Spark, I believe it's called. So that kind of covers the, those easy to get 40 OEM components. These are straight off of a Ford Explorer with a 5.0 in them. The next components that we need for the distributor ignition are the coils. A lot of the aftermarket ECUs will use LS coils or other smart coils, but those don't work with the Ford ECU. 
But from all the research that I've been able to gather and that other people believe is true is the coil from the Godzilla. So this is just a two pin coil, just like the ones that would be on a 4.6 liter, but they have all the bolt pattern and should be able to easily make up a mounting system to mount this onto this engine. So this is the coil from a Godzilla engine or the 7.3 liter gas Ford. In the previous engine assembly video, I did mention that I needed to get some different valve covers. This is the reason why the, the tall valve covers that were on there just did not give enough room between the intake and the valve cover to mount the coils and get the plugs and things like that. So I have some trick flow valve covers on here. These are lower profile, but still have enough room for the roller rockers. And I still have the one inch spacer on this intake. So I have plenty of room to figure out how to mount these coils. Now these valve covers are brand new and kind of too pretty for me to go grind on and try to weld on bolt pads onto them. So I'm just going to make a bracket that mounts over top of these uh, valve covers and will hold all of these coils. Next, you may be wondering, how am I going to do this with the factory ECU? So we're going to have to change the car over from the EC4 that's in the car currently to a later generation of the EC5. And I plan to be using the one out of what they call like a luxury sedan. So this is one out of like a Crown Vic, a town car, uh, Grand Marquis, Marauder, things like that. This one actually came out of uh, Crown Vic, I believe. And I think it's like an 03, 04 uh, model range that you have to get. But a lot of this information is on the EFI data tuning uh, form and website. So go there to get all the latest and best information. But this is the ECU that we're going to be using. And it does have uh, the what I believe the J3 port right in there. So we will be able to put uh, a quarter horse on here and get it all tuned up. I think this one can also be flashed with using the, like the OBD2 port but we at least have the quarter horse that we can get it all tuned up. And if you're not familiar between uh, the EC4 and the EC5, they do have different connectors. So this isn't a pure plug and play. We are gonna have to be changing the harnesses over to work with this ECU. That leads me into the engine harness. So this is the harness that's gonna be going from the ECU that's inside underneath the dash, down the fender, connect into the engine. The engine has its own harness that has a, a disconnect in there. So this is just the one that goes into the fender and connects to uh, various things in there and the ECU. So the car actually started life as a V6 and the V6 was EC5. So I had this harness laying around not being used. So I was able to take it, kind of rework it to make it into a V8 harness. So I had to add some wires for the other two ejectors that are added, had to add in wires for all the coils that we were adding and a few other things here and there. But this harness is basically done at this point and will work for this car. I like being able to use this harness because it has all the right lengths. I know it works because it came out of the car originally, other than the few wires that I've had to put in. And then there's a lot of wires that had to be moved around that are different between the Mustang ECU and then the Crown Vic ECU. But as I've kind of shown in previous videos, I'm not scared of wiring. Wiring can be daunting for a lot of people, but it's just, you need to take your time, plan everything out, have the right tools and the right documentation. So that is what's been super helpful on this one. I got these two uh, Ford OEM wiring diagram books. So the, I've got these off of eBay. So this is one is for a 1994 Mustang. Uh, I've shown this one in previous videos where I was doing the, the dash rewiring or the, the push button switch. And this thing is, it has everything. It has way more information than what you could find on the internet or in the Haynes manuals or any other manuals that I've seen. So. Highly recommend getting that. And then since the ECU is out of a 2003 like luxury car, 
I got a book for a 2003 Crown Vic Grand Marquee. Uh, the Marauder also is in here, but this has also been invaluable to figure out all the wiring changes that had to be done for this harness to make sure all the pins are going to the right thing. And surprisingly, a lot of the colors and even the, the channel number, the circuit numbers, have not changed from 1994 to 2003. They just added more in and added onto the numbers. But a lot of the numbers that were already there or colors that were already used were all the same, which makes it super convenient. Then for the engine harness, I am just gonna be reusing the engine harness that came on this engine. It's Everything's the correct length. It has the right connections on it for the components that are still on the engine. I'll just need to remove uh, the things for the distributor, and then I'll need to add in the wiring for the cam sink, the crank, and uh, the coils. Luckily, I was able to find all those connections brand new on Ballinger Motorsport. So I got brand new pins and connectors to go on there so I can easily make the wires. I also have the wires or the pins that will go into the, the disconnect here. I was able to find those. The only pins that I have not been able to find and it seemed to be impossible to get are the ones for the actual ECU. So that's why I actually picked up several harnesses from the junkyard and just reuse wires from there to make to add in the connections that I needed. Instead of, I could have made it a little bit easier if I started with a V8 harness, uh, but I would have still had to move things around. I would have still had to probably add wiring in or things like that instead of starting with the V6 one. But the V6 one is the one that I had laying around. I did buy a V8 one and just stole wires from it, but it was a little bit different in how these other connections were down here. And I know these fit into the car that I have because they are for a 94 Mustang where the later harness would be for like a, a new edge or something like that. So that is why I went with this harness and, and having to try to reuse things as much as possible because I can't get these pins. And the last thing, the trigger wheel for the crank position. I have tried to find ones that will work on the factory SN95 one, it doesn't seem, I haven't been able to find one. There are ones that kind of work onto a Fox body, which is different. And then as I said, the Explorer one is different and won't work on these engines either. So I've designed up my own trigger wheel. It's pretty simple. It's just a circle with uh, teeth on it. So it's 36 minus one tooth. So you got one tooth missing right here and one of the cool things on Sen Cut Sen is you can get it coated. So I got it zinc coated, so it's all really nice. And then I took it to a friend and got it uh, machined out to where it is a press fit onto the back of the balancer. So this was machined down and then this was machined on the inside to give a press fit. We just need to get it lined up correctly to where it is the, the right timing for the, the engine, but that is pretty simple to do a lot. Of, there's a lot of information already on the internet to do that, but that is how I'm planning on doing my trigger wheel. There are a couple other options that people have done out there, but there's no bolt on solution. And this is just what I came up with and that I really like. I know that was a lot of information, a lot of talking, not a lot of work actually being done, but we got to start somewhere. We got to lay down the foundation of how we're doing, what we're doing it, why we're doing it. So thank you guys for watching. We will see you in the next video later. Actually, I'm going to keep these just in case.